Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about destructors. So in our last video, we looked at the basics of constructors, and we used these special functions as part of our structs and classes to help initialize our objects when we were creating them. So when we create an object, we would run our constructor to say initialize some data members. Now, another thing we might want to do with our objects is something special when we're getting rid of an object. So say an object is going out of scope at the end of a function, or we have, say, some objects that are dynamically allocated, and we're calling that delete operator to get rid of them. So we might want to do something special to clean up after our objects. Now, for this, we can use another special function um, as part of our structs in our classes, and that's called a destructor. And this will run when we're getting rid of, say, our objects. So let's go ahead and look at a simple use of a destructor here and kind of how these things work. So here, let's create a new example called, say, destructors.cpp. And inside of here, we can start off by including IO stream so we can do some printing. And of course, we'll need a main function here, core of our C++ programs. So let's say we want to, you know, create a new struct here for, say, a, you know, an integer array. So maybe we want to create our own type for a dynamically allocated array of integers. So here I'll just create a struct called say int array. I'll define this struct. And inside of here, you know, we can add say, you know, a data member that's just an integer pointer called array here. So this will store our pointer to our dynamically allocated array of integers. Then I can go ahead and create a constructor here. So our constructor again will have the same name as our class or our struct. So just int array in this case, no return type. Um, and in this case, I'll create a constructor that takes one parameter, maybe some integer size and the number of elements we want to dynamically allocate for this array. So inside the body of our constructor, I can just set array equal to new int, say size. So we'll dynamically allocate space for size integers and store a pointer to that memory inside of our array pointer here. Now from here, I can go ahead and use my defined struct here. So I can say, you know, create a variable that is of this type int array. So I can create an instance of the struct, so an object, and let's just call it say a, and I'll pass to our constructor, uh, maybe something like 10. So we're gonna create a dynamically allocated array of 10 integers here. And of course, from here, I can just access this dynamically allocated array through a member access operator. So for example, I can do a dot array, and I can access say element zero here and set it equal to 10, right? So I'm just indexing into this dynamically allocated array that's part of my object. And of course we can say, you know, maybe print out that value. Um, so here I'll just do std cout and print out this value 10 that we set for uh, the zero index. So a dot array index zero, and then a new line character afterwards. So we get a new line afterwards. Now, one of the things that we haven't taken care of here is we're not cleaning up after ourselves. We've dynamically allocated some memory, but we're not freeing it anywhere. So we have a memory leak going on. So in order to say handle this cleanup, one of the things we can do is write a destructor. So if we go ahead and look at the CPP reference page on the right hand side of the screen. Um, so this is for destructors. You can see that it says a destructor is a special member function that is called when the lifetime of an object ends. Uh, and the purpose of the destructor is to free the resources that an object may have acquired during this lifetime. So during the lifetime of this object, we uh, acquired some memory here. So we did a dynamic allocation. So inside of our destructor, we probably want to free that memory so that someone else can use it. So let's go ahead and write a destructor here. Now our destructor is similar to a constructor in that um, it's going to have the exact same name as say our structure or class. Uh, the one difference compared to our constructor though, is that it's going to have a tilde um, out front. So we'll have this tilde int array, and this is going to be our constructor. And it's not gonna take any parameters here. So similar to our uh, constructor, it doesn't have a return type, um, and we, we can't call it directly here. It gets called kind of indirectly when something's going out of scope, um, or if we're say deleting say um, objects that were dynamically allocated. Okay, so inside of our destructor here, this is where we can do our cleanup for say our object. 
So here we've dynamically allocated an array of integers. So let's go ahead and free up that memory. So we can do this uh, array delete here. So delete with the square brackets um, and then pass our array pointer here. And then just to show that this is running, we'll just do a quick printout here. So we'll do std cout um, and we'll print, you know, running our destructor right, with an exclamation uh, point for some fun. Okay. So there we have it. We have a very simple program here. We create um, our interray of 10 integers here. Um, we run our constructor and dynamically allocate um, a size or an array of 10 integers. We set the first element equal to the value 10. We print out that element and then we return zero here. Um, so we, we exit out of this function. And when that happens, um, our destructor will fire here. So our this tilde interay uh, destructor here will run. We'll see this printout of running our destructor and it will free our memory for our array. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this works. So we'll save this. We can go ahead and compile destructors.cpp and we'll call the output executable uh, just something like destructors here. So then you can see we have our executable and let's go ahead and run this. So you can see we have our printout right from our dynamically allocated array of integers that we made. And then after this printout, right, when our object goes out of scope here and it gets destroyed, we see our destructor fires here. And we see our print running our destructor here. And then after that, we would have had our free of our memory here. So our memory got freed, you know, our object cleaned up after itself, after it went out of scope. Now this kind of design pattern that you're seeing here where you know, an object may acquire some resources when we construct it and get rid of those resources um, when this object is freed. This is often referred to as RAII, or resource acquisition is initialization. And the basic concept of this is that, you know, when we create objects, they grab some resource, and when they go out of scope or get deleted, they free up that resources. So the user doesn't have to do any kind of uh, manual management of resources there. So this same kind of thinking goes uh, along with, say, our standard library containers. So something like a std vector, right? A std vector, we don't have to worry about the underlying dynamic allocation. It will do some dynamic allocation for us, and then it will free that memory when we're done with that vector, right? The same is true for a number of the other containers and types that we have in C++. Now, I think another good thing to think about here is kind of the design of our class. So even though here we're showing off kind of the basic ways of using destructors and why we might want to use the destructor, I think it's important to note that we should consider why we need a destructor in the first place, right? So in this case, we have a raw pointer here and we're manually managing memory. So with C++, we really don't need to do this. And in fact, we can get away with writing pretty much this exact same class, but without needing to manually manage this memory or even need a destructor here. So what exactly do we need to do? So here, let's just go ahead and get rid of our destructor here. We don't need this anymore. And instead of having, say, a raw pointer here, why don't we use something that we looked at just a few videos again? Why don't we use a std unique pointer and give that um, object ownership over our dynamically allocated memory? So here I'll go ahead and include memory. Right, so we can use this uh, std unique pointer. And instead of an array here um, or an integer pointer, we'll create the type std unique pointer to an array of integers. And then instead of having this constructor here that calls new int, you know, what we can go ahead and do is just use this member initializer list here. And we can directly initialize array with new int of size, right? Now this will work pretty much identically to our previous example here, except instead of using a raw pointer, we get to use our unique pointer and we don't even need to worry about writing a, a destructor, right? When our object goes out of scope, our unique pointer will go out of scope and the destructor for that unique pointer will, will handle that free of memory for us. Okay. so. That's a bit of the basics of using destructors and some things to think about in terms of, you know, why are we writing destructors in the first place? And do we really need to write a destructor? There are cases where we certainly do need to write a destructor, but there are other cases where we can 
um, you know, get around it by using, say, some of our modern features of C++, like these unique pointers and our STL containers. Now below the video, I'll link uh, the CPP reference page to our destructors. So I think this is a good thing to look at to try to understand things more. There's certainly a lot of things you can get into um, with destructors. And of course, any of these examples can be found at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.